You have so much contributed to. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I'm shocked. John, go ahead. Thank you. Mr. President, I'd like to get your reaction to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein's decision to appoint a special counsel uh, to investigate the Russia Russian interference in the campaign. Was this the right move, or is this part of a witch hunt? Well, I respect the move, but the entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion between certainly myself and my campaign, but I can always speak for myself and the Russians, zero. Uh, I think it divides the country. I think we have uh, a very divided country because of that and many other things. Uh, so I can tell you that uh, we want to bring this great country of ours together, John. And I will also say very strongly, we've had tremendous success. You look at our job numbers. You look at what's going on at the border, as we discussed before. You look at what will be happening. You're going to see some incredible numbers with respect to the success of uh, General uh, Mattis and others with the ISIS situation. Uh, the numbers are staggering how successful they've been, the military has been. Uh, tomorrow, as you know, I'm going to Saudi Arabia, I'm going to Israel, we're going to Rome, and we have the G7. We have a lot of great things going on. So I hate to see anything that divides. Uh, I'm fine with whatever people want to do, but we have to get back to running this country really, really well. We've made tremendous progress in the last hundred and some odd days, tremendous progress. And you see job numbers, you see uh, all of the production that's starting, uh, plants starting to open again, haven't been open in years. I'm very proud of it. That's what I want to be focused on, because believe me, there's no collusion. Uh, Russia is fine, but whether it's Russia or anybody else, my total priority, believe me, is the United States of America. So thank you very much. Uh, President Trump, President Santos, can we say that today we are setting a new roadmap in the relationship between Colombia and the United States, which are the concrete commitments? You were talking about the post-conflict time. Many funds are needed for that. And on the issue of Venezuela, President Trump, many deaths, human rights violations, There's plenty to be done. As well as a very, very serious problem. We haven't really seen a problem like that, I would say, Mr. President, in decades, in terms of the kind of violence that we're witnessing. Uh, the President was telling me, and I knew, that Venezuela was a very, very wealthy country, just about the wealthiest in your neck of the woods. And uh, had tremendous strengths in so many different ways. And now it's, uh, it's poverty-stricken. People don't have enough to eat. People have no food. There's great violence. And we will do whatever is necessary, and we'll work together to do whatever is necessary to help with fixing that. And I'm really talking on a uh, humanitarian level. When you look at the oil reserves that they have, when you look at the potential wealth that Venezuela has, you, you sort of have to wonder, why is that happening? How is that possible? But it's been unbelievably poorly run for a long period of time, and hopefully that will change, and they can use those assets for the good and to take care of their people, because right now what's happening is really a, a disgrace to humanity. And, uh, John, I think you also had a question for the President, if you'd like to. Does he have another one? Can you, can you, the, yeah. yeah. This question about <laughs> the commitment. Mire, el, el compromiso. The commitment on President Trump's side and his administration was shown through the approval of the budget that for Colombia means an increase in the support to fund the post-conflict era. 
Last night, we received from a very important organization, the Atlantic Council, a report which includes both parties, presided by a Republican senator and a Democrat senator with a roadmap recommending the governments of the United States and Colombia to follow. This morning, we established this Entrepreneurial Council, United States, Colombia, so that the private sector can also have a voice in that roadmap. This means we are working together on every front that can be convenient for both countries. We will continue to work together. We have ratified that commitment today during our conversation. And as I said before, we have the best of relations with the United States. We are strategic allies in the region, and we will continue to be so. Thank you, Mr. President. President Santos, to you. Uh, you heard President Trump uh, say that critical to stopping the flow of drugs into the United States will be the wall that he wants to build on the Mexican border. Do you agree with him? Would that wall uh, be a step, uh, a, a positive step, and a step towards reducing the flow of drugs across the border? I believe that uh, the best way to fight the drug trafficking is by collaborating. This is not uh, a problem of Colombia only or a problem of the United States only. It's a world problem. And we have to all work together. Uh, we declared the war on drugs 40 years ago. The world declared the war on drugs, and it's a war that has not been won. So we must be more effective and more efficient. Now, we are doing a very big effort because of the peace process to have a new strategy, carrot and stick. Stick by forced eradication. We have already eradicated this year only 15,000 hectares, which is the whole volume that we eradicated last year. And we're starting to eradicate, uh, to substitute uh, voluntarily uh, through a program where the peasants, and we have 80,000 families already in the program, uh, that they are going to substitute for legal crops. And this is the first time that this could be done because of the peace. Before, the conflict did not allow us to build roads and to give these peasants an alternative. Now we have. So we have to take advantage of this opportunity and continue reducing the production of coca. In the meantime, we will work together, the U.S. and Colombia, with other countries, Central America, to fight the other links of the chain, the intermediaries. We have destroyed 22,000 laboratories in the Colombian jungles, seizing the cocaine in the transit. We have seized record amount of tons last year, and this year we're doing even better than last year. So by working together, we can be much more effective, and that is, that is the commitment we just made or ratified this afternoon. And that was a long and very diplomatic answer to your question. I will say it a little bit shorter. Walls work. Just ask Israel. They work. Believe me, they work. And we have no choice. Peter Baker? Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in the light of a very busy news week, a lot of people would like to get to the bottom of a couple of things, give you a chance to go on record here. Did you at any time urge former FBI Director James Comey in any way, shape, or form to close or to back down the investigation into Michael Flynn? And also, as you look no. back... No. No. Next question. Next question. As you look back over the past six months or year, um, have you had any recollection where you've wondered if anything you have done has been something that might be worthy of criminal charges in these investigations or impeachment, as some on the left are implying? I think it's totally ridiculous. Everybody thinks so. And again, we have to get back to uh, working our country properly so that we can take care of the problems that we have. We have plenty of problems. Uh, we've done a fantastic job. We have a tremendous group of people, millions and millions of people out there that are looking at what you had just said and said, what are they doing? Uh, Director Comey was very unpopular with most people. I actually thought when I made that decision, 
And I also got a very, very strong recommendation, as you know, from uh, the Deputy Attorney General, uh, Rod Rosenstein. But when I made that decision, I actually thought that it would be a bipartisan decision, because you look at all of the people on the Democratic side, uh, not only the Republican side, that were saying such terrible things about Director Comey. Then he had the very poor performance on Wednesday. That was a poor, poor performance. So poor, in fact, that I believe, and you'd have to ask him, because I don't like to speak for other people, but I believe that's why uh, the Deputy Attorney General went out and uh, wrote his very, very strong letter. Uh, and then, on top of that, after the Wednesday performance by Director Comey, you had a person come and have to readjust the record, which many people have never seen before, because there were misstatements made. And I thought that was something that was terrible. We need a great director of the FBI. I cherish the FBI. It's special. All over the world, no matter where you go, the FBI is special. The FBI has not had that special reputation with what happened in the campaign, what happened with respect to the Clinton campaign, and even, you could say, directly or indirectly, with respect to the much more successful Trump campaign. We're going to have a director who's going to be outstanding. I'll be announcing that director very soon, and I look forward to doing it. I think the people in the FBI will be very, 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 very thrilled. And just in concluding, uh, we look forward to getting this whole situation behind us so that when we uh, go for the jobs, we go for the strong military, when we go for all of the things that we've been pushing so hard and so successfully, including health care, because Obamacare is collapsing. It's dead. It's gone. There's nothing to compare anything to because we don't have health care in this country. You just look at what's happening. Aetna just pulled out. Other insurance companies are pulling out. We don't have health care. Obamacare is a fallacy. It's gone. We need health care. We need to cut taxes. We're going to cut taxes. If I get what I want, it'll be the biggest tax cut in the history of our nation. And that's what I want. It's going to bring back companies. It's going to bring back jobs. We lost so many jobs and so many companies to countries that are not so far from you, Mr. President. They're very close to you, actually, and to many other places throughout the world. We're going to change that. We're going to have expansion. We already do. You look at what's happening with Ford and with General Motors in Michigan and Ohio. You look at the tremendous number of jobs that are being announced in so many different fields. Uh, that's what I'm proud of, and that's what we want to focus our energy on. The other is uh, something I can only tell you. There was no uh, collusion. And everybody, even my enemies, have said there is no collusion. So we want to get back and keep on the track that we're on, because the track that we're on is record-setting. And that's what we want to do, is we want to break very positive records. Thank you. You could ask a question. Ricardo. Oh, sorry. You have another question? For, for you. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Um, my question is, in, as someone who led a nation that's really done a lot of rebuilding and had to rebound from an epidemic of crime and drugs over quite a many years, um, what do you make of Mr. Trump's America First policy? And further, you've had a, a tough time with conservative radio, sometimes been called a punching bag, and you've said you have to persevere. I'm curious if you've given any advice to President Trump on how to do so. Um, I, I don't think I'm in a position to give any advice to uh, President Trump. He can take care of himself. Uh, and. Uh, what I, what I, what we did in Colombia, you quite uh, rightly uh, mentioned it, is persevere. We, when you know your port of destination, and we know you, and you know that you're doing the correct thing, uh, you simply have to persevere, and that's what we've done in Colombia, and that's why we were on the verge of being a failed state some years ago, and now we're one of the stars of the region. And that's through hard work, perseverance, and clarity of your objectives. And that's what we have done, and we have to continue because uh, the trip is not over. Ricardo Aguilar. Mr. President, I'd like to ask you about trade. 
you are about to start the renegotiation of NAFTA, and Colombia, unlike other countries in the hemisphere, has a large com trade deficit with the United States. Are you worried about the fact that that could contribute to increasing that trade deficit? Decision on the peace process in Colombia. Well, it's been a long process, and it's been uh, a great thing to watch in the sense that the president did a fantastic job. That's not easy after so many years of war. Uh, so I'm very, very proud to get to know you, and I really congratulate you. There's nothing tougher than peace, and we want to make peace all over the world, and you are really a great example of somebody that started it. I mean, FARC is that was a long, tough situation, as you know very well, coming from the country. Uh, but I think the President has done a magnificent job. Not easy, but he's done a magnificent job. Clearer impossible. <laughs> On the trade issue, our deficit with the United States is not so large. It is a moderate deficit which, of course, both countries will try to increase the volume of trade in both directions and investments also in both directions. Colombia is becoming an important investor here in the United States, and this is something not many people know, but we have considerable investments in the United States. We have attempted to give dynamism to these flows of trade, of investment, getting together those main players who are the investors in the private sector. I believe the foundations have been laid. We have the free trade agreement, which is working well. The number of Colombian businesses that are exporting to the United States has grown. And we both believe that we can take greater advantage of those agreements in order to increase flows in both directions for the benefit both of the Colombian and American peoples. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right, President Trump meeting with uh, Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos, who won a Nobel Prize, Peace Prize uh, last year. The president, uh, each one of them took two uh, questions uh, from their home country press. Uh, president Trump was asked about the decision um, made yesterday to appoint a special counsel to handle the Russia investigation. The president said he respects the move, but the entire thing is just a witch hunt. He said it divides the country. He said there is no collusion with Russia, although he did also say that he was speaking only for himself. Uh, he was also, the president asked, about allegations made uh, in a memo written by former FBI Director uh, James Comey, uh, so according to a source close to Comey, uh, in which Comey says uh, that in February 14th uh, in the Oval Office, uh, President Trump asked him to lay off Michael Flynn when it comes to the Russia investigation. And President Trump was asked if that was true in any way, and the president said, no, no. Next question. Uh, he went on to say that the FBI director was very unpopular, and he fired him uh, for any number of reasons. Uh, let's go to Sarah Murray, who is in the East Room uh, right now, uh, covering uh, this press conference uh, for us. Uh, and Sarah, um, the president uh, mincing no words. Uh, the reporter wasn't even done with his question uh, when asked about the allegations that James Comey uh, makes in this memo that we've been told about. That's right. That makes it all the more interesting, right, to see if we actually finally do get to see these memos from James Comey. There's some speculation that they may be less likely uh, to come out now that there is a special counsel. But look, I think what we saw, Jake, is a very different tone from the president in person here today than we saw from the written statement the White House put out last night. And we've been hearing since then that the president is awfully peeved about the fact that there is a special counsel. We've been hearing from the White House for weeks that they don't think it is necessary. And you saw 
saw how quickly the president shot back when he was asked about James Comey, but also when he was asked whether he felt like he had done anything wrong that would warrant an investigation, whether he had done anything that might warrant impeachment, which we should note is a very, very far cry from ever happening, but certainly something that Democrats in Washington, a couple of them, have begun floating. And the president was very dismissive of that, suggesting that he did nothing wrong and also saying that he wants to get back to sort of the work he set out here to do. A number of the president's allies I've talked to today have said that they hope that he will stop talking about the special counsel, that they hope that he will stop talking about the Russia investigation and sort of use this upcoming foreign trip as a way to reset his agenda to focus on the promises he made to the American people on the campaign trail to appear presidential and to really sort of return to the work that he came to Washington to do. But Jake, as you and I both know with this president, he finds it very hard to let things go when he feels slighted. And it's clear that's how he feels about the naming of a special counsel. All right, Sarah Murray at the White House uh, for us. Uh, let's bring back our, our panel uh, and uh, Jen Psaki. This was a very uh, definitive no uh, by President uh, Trump when asked about the allegations uh, that are said to be recorded in this contemporaneous memo written by the former FBI director.